The video you are about to watch contains one single F-bomb, and I stand by it fully. Welcome back to Chronically Musical. My name is Alice, and this channel is a place where I share videos about what it's like to live with two chronic illnesses, as well as what it's like to be a professional classical musician. I upload videos every single Wednesday, so if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out when I upload something new. Pretty sure I just lost half my audience with that one. Anyway, there's a term that I've sort of casually thrown around here and there in some of my past videos that I realized some of you may not be completely familiar with. To be perfectly honest, I had never even heard of it before until I was diagnosed with two autoimmune diseases. If you looked at the title of this video, you've probably already guessed it, but today we are going to be talking about flare-ups. What they are, how they feel, and what kind of damage they can do. If you're curious to learn more about autoimmune disease in general, you can go ahead and click this little link right above my head right here, somewhere, and it'll take you to a video that talks all about them. All right, so a flare-up, or flare as it's sometimes called, is a term used to refer to the onset of symptoms related to a particular autoimmune disease, most often caused by excess inflammation. Flares can be sudden and severe and vary from person to person and from disease to disease. They can be short-term or long-term and are often triggered by things like stress, overuse, and even sunlight. Flare-ups can also be triggered by changes in medication or when a medication stops working for a patient altogether, which unfortunately happens quite often. Our bodies have a tendency to build up antibodies against various immunosuppressants. It's really fucking frustrating. Sorry kids, this is a uh, rated R today. There's no other way to say it. It's, it's frustrating. So you might be wondering what exactly a flare-up feels like. Well, the short answer is everyone is different. It depends on the person, it depends on the disease, it depends on the time of year. I'm not even joking, it can be so random and specific at the same time that it is pretty hard to pinpoint what exactly a flare-up feels like. Because of this, I can only speak on my own experiences with my own autoimmune diseases, which, depending on which one is flaring up, can present wildly different symptoms. Some people can have inflammation present and not even realize it. I consider myself to be one of the lucky ones because if I have inflammation, I feel it. I do not feel good. And 100% of the time in my experience, my CRP and sed rate levels will reflect exactly what I expect, which is an increase in inflammation. So like I said earlier, I can only speak on my own experience, but my two autoimmune diseases, inflammatory bowel disease and undifferentiated connective tissue disease, have presented very different symptoms depending on which one is flaring and when. My ulcerative colitis, for example, gives me warning signs. It's a little bit more of a gradual progression in my experience. The first red flag for me is quite literally a red flag in that I start to see blood in my stool and that stool is usually more often than not diarrhea. So red flag number one is bloody diarrhea. <laughs> God, I know, I'm quite the catch. Then I start to have more frequent bowel movements and urgency, so I'm just not able to hold it anymore. And all of this is accompanied by pretty severe cramping and bloating. Because the inflammation I have for my ulcerative colitis is more focused towards my rectum, bleeding is usually my first symptom because it's, it's, the, first, it's the first thing to come out. You know what I mean? Hold on, where's my colon? This is my rectum. Well, not my rectum, but you get what I mean. This is the rectum. And if I'm bleeding right in this area, that's gen generally gonna be the thing that is the most obvious the soonest. If you have inflammation and bleeding higher up in your colon, it's gonna be a little bit harder to tell because that blood tends to get a little bit darker in color, can almost be um, black and your stool can appear tarry. And so when it's closer to the bottom, it's actually much easier to see because it's pretty bright red. Okay, that was a fun little poop tangent. My UCTD on the other hand is random as hell. It is manifested in the form of 
fluid in my chest cavity, inflammation in my lungs, random facial swelling, chronic chest pain, and all of it has been pretty spontaneous. It's, it's occurred pretty much out of nowhere with no warning signs. So unlike my IBD that has kind of a pattern to it, my UCTD is completely unpredictable. It's actually kind of a nightmare. <laughs> now, though my UCTD symptoms are incredibly unpredictable, I have discovered that they are often exacerbated by things like refined sugar and alcohol, which is why I choose to avoid those things most of the time. Speaking of which, next week's video is kind of sort of maybe related to this sort of thing. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that little notification bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified when I upload a new video. I guarantee you're not gonna wanna miss this one. Unfortunately, flare-ups can cause quite a lot of damage, and sometimes that damage is actually irreversible. The key thing in managing autoimmune disease is to treat the symptoms as quickly as possible so they can't cause this kind of lasting damage. Insurance companies sometimes make this really, really difficult because a lot of them have enacted certain protocols like step therapy that actually require patients to go through a number of medications before actually getting to the medication that is right for them. This is a really backwards cost-saving measure that forces patients to try cheaper medications that they know won't work just so they can get qualified and get coverage for the medication that will work. And sometimes it can be too late and patients have to resort to things like surgery that end up being a whole lot more expensive. I'm gonna make a video all about the Safe Step Act that I've been advocating for in Congress, which basically provides loopholes to patients in the step therapy protocol process. But the main thing you need to know is that insurance companies kinda suck and they're really sort of only looking out for their own best interest. All of this is just to say that flare-ups can be scary and unpredictable and really, really painful but they are my reality, and they are the reality of so many others out there living with autoimmune disease. So I do my best to just listen to my body and stay positive and try and take everything that comes my way in stride, which I know is really easier said than done. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments below if you liked this video and what you learned about flare-ups. As always, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at AlicePinkViola if you have any questions. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and give it a thumbs up and share it. And um, I think those are all the things that you're supposed to do. So do all those things and I will see you right back here next Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.